Now, for weeks and weeks, I was on record saying that WrestleMania 31, in my mind, was going to shape up to be a forgettable show. And in my WrestleMania 31 review, I gave you the many reasons why I felt, for the most part, this was indeed a forgettable show. I'm not going to sit there and just change my opinion because it's not the popular thing to have that opinion. I'm not going to sit there and admit I'm wrong when I don't feel that I was really wrong. I'm also not going to sit there and just try to make myself right if I don't feel like I'm right, contrary to what some of you may believe. I largely feel that WrestleMania 31 was a forgettable show. I stand behind that. I fully believe in that. And nothing will ever change my opinion on that. At the end of the day, I don't want WrestleMania to suck. It's WrestleMania. I want to be able to sit back, relax, and enjoy it and be able to justify why I just gave four plus hours of my life to watching the show. If you really think I wanted WrestleMania 31 to be a forgettable show in my mind, you're sadly mistaken. I assure you of that. However, I understand that a lot of you ended up enjoying WrestleMania 31 to differing, varying levels and degrees. Some a little bit, some quite a bit, maybe just because it surpassed low expectations. Uh, some of you thoroughly enjoyed it. Some of you thought it was great. And I could see it. I don't agree with it, but I can see it. You see Ronda Rousey appear at WrestleMania. You see DX and the NWO at WrestleMania. You see Randy Orton and Seth Rollins have that incredible finish. Your guy Daniel Bryan wins the IC title. You have the tremendous main event and the tremendous finish to that main event, something that I had been pining for for months, mind you, for months. So I could understand why a lot of people would have liked this show. I think part of that, honestly, is because the bar of expectations had been set so low that if the WWE managed to accomplish anything at all, they would fool you into thinking that this was a much better show than it ultimately was. And sadly, I think that's exactly what happened. Let's call it as we really see it. If Wade Barrett retains his IC title, as an example, and Roman Reigns ends up winning the belt, most of your opinions on WrestleMania 31 would be entirely different, and i probably be one of the few talking about how this was a really good show. No, probably not. But you get the point. It's like you get caught up into a couple of things, and it's allowing yourselves to be clouded from what everything else is going on here. And I'm sorry, but when we're talking about WrestleMania, it is about the fact that it is a WrestleMania. You can't just grade it and measure it against any other regular standard pay-per-view or even other big four pay-per-view. WrestleMania is WrestleMania. It is about that entire WrestleMania experience and all the different components that make up WrestleMania. And again, I thought the WWE came up tragically short. So I can sit there again, though, and understand why fans would sit there and get caught up in it. You're happy Seth Rollins won. In part, you're also even more happy that Roman Reigns didn't win. Let's be honest here. You were happy to see Taker come back. Some of you were caught up in the fact that you thought Taker versus Wyatt was so much better than Taker versus Lesnar last year. But again, just because Taker Lesnar was so bad in your mind last year, does that necessarily mean that Taker versus Wyatt was so much better this year or that it even makes it a really good match? No, that's not necessarily the case. It's all based off of the expectations and the perception heading in and whether or not your expectations have been exceeded. Well, if you set the expectations way down here and it comes in here, then it far surpassed your expectations and therefore you're fooled into thinking, again, that is much better than it actually was. It's not like your expectations were here and the show delivered here. Then it just met your expectations. And I hope you kind of get what I'm getting at here. But if you enjoyed WrestleMania 31, so be it. I've got my opinion on it. You've got your opinion on it. And I guess opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. But I will say that sometimes there are opinions that are so ridiculous that they are just completely off the mark. Yes, I do believe occasionally that you can have an opinion that is just flat out fucking wrong. You can have an opinion that is just completely and totally ridiculous, not because it's off the wall or this or that, just because it's not based off of any real logic whatsoever. It's just based off of pure idiocy. And when it comes to some of the views that I've seen, especially from members of the wrestling media for WrestleMania 31, 
these people's opinions are just fucking wrong. Now, again, look, I didn't like the show. I thought it was largely forgettable. Many of you like the show, again, to differing and varying levels, and that's fine. But I don't see how anybody of any type of sound, rational, credible mind can sit there and say that WrestleMania 31 was one of the best, if not the best, WrestleManias of all time. What in the bluest of blue fucks are these people smoking? Have you lost your minds? Are you fucking crazy? WrestleMania 31 is one of the best WrestleManias of all time. Hell, some of you, WrestleMania 31 is the best WrestleMania of all time. How about we just pump the brakes a little bit here and come back to reality? Because that is completely and totally fucking ridiculous. So you are going to tell me that a WrestleMania 31 with a predictable Cena Rusev US title match that wasn't all that good, a forgettable Divas tag match that had no purpose or consequence for being on the show, a match that featured a ladder match that was just middle of the road, among other things that happened on the show, is the best WrestleMania of all time. Are you delusional? Like, for example, I don't like WrestleMania 17, and I've made that well known in the past. However, with that said, if you seriously could look me eye to eye and try and tell me that WrestleMania 31 is better than WrestleMania 17, even I will throw the bullshit flag on that one. Even I will call you a fucking idiot and moron. There is no fucking way that a WrestleMania 31 was better than, let's say, a WrestleMania 17. Not to mention other great WrestleManias over the years, whether that be a WrestleMania 3, a WrestleMania 7, which I have always thought is kind of an underrated show, a WrestleMania 10, some may say a WrestleMania 12, fine, a WrestleMania 14, a WrestleMania 19, how about a WrestleMania 24? Hell, I don't even think this measures up to recent ones like WrestleMania 28 or WrestleMania 30, just last year's WrestleMania. But you've got idiots talking about this show either being one of the best, or in some cases, the best WrestleMania of all fucking time. Why? Why? Because Seth Rollins won the belt? That's not enough to get the job done. Just because you had somebody cash in finally? That's not enough to get the job done. You cannot sit there and tell me that every match delivered on this card. You cannot sit there and tell me that this felt like some great spectacle of WrestleMania dumb, because it did not. And what really terrifies me about this is one thing, if fans are saying this, because we're all fans and we all say stupid shit from time to time, me most especially included, but I see certain members of the wrestling media, those that are supposed to have the credibility because, hell, they're getting paid to talk about this shit for a living. And I see some of the most ridiculous, dumb dick shit that I've ever seen about any show at any time being said about WrestleMania 31. Like, look at John Powell from the Canadian Online Explorer. He gave this event a perfect 10 out of 10. Well, of course he fucking does. He gives one every two or three years to a WrestleMania. Who the fuck is he in the bag for? He flat out called this the best WrestleMania ever. In all of the years of WrestleMania, dating back to 1985, this show, in this asshat's opinion, was the best of all time. WrestleMania 31! And somebody pays him to write about professional wrestling. Somebody pays him to cover WrestleMania. And this is the type of bullshit that you get. You get like Chris Graham of the Augusta Free Press. He also called it the best WrestleMania of all time. Here's some of the things he said. He praised the main event. He said that for once you had a hell of a show and for a night wrestling was unpredictably fun again. Was it all that unpredictable? And even if that's the case, just because it's unpredictable, that doesn't automatically make it good. But again, the fuck are people talking about? The best WrestleMania of all time? Have our standards dropped that low? Have we learned to accept mediocrity that much? Have we been fooled by the WWE that terribly to the point where if they give you anything that is slightly above bad, you automatically overrate it, and a little bit more than that is fucking great or awesome. How ridiculous is it to rate a show a perfect 10 out of 10? Especially when you've done it several times, John Powell, you stupid son of a bitch!
To sit there and rate a show 10 out of 10 would have to mean, for my money, if you're rating it as a perfect show, that every match was perfect, every segment was perfect, everything about the fucking show was perfect. But yet you're sitting there and you're rating matches, even the feature matches, the one you say the best, like the triple threat for the title, eight and a half. You're sitting there rating Sting and Triple H as nine, and Taker Wyatt, I think you gave it like eight stars. How the fuck is the show a perfect 10 out of 10 if none of the matches actually have 10 out of 10 for a rating? Does that make any fucking sense? The answer is no! Why would anybody read your hot garbage? Because that's exactly what it is, hot garbage. Chris Graham, again, part of the Augusta Free Press, you know, a legitimate organization, with a completely illegitimate opinion, the best WrestleMania of all time. What the fuck are you smoking, man? And then Jack Demenezes, whatever the fuck, from the Independent, the good old UK. He says this will go down as one of the best, if not the greatest, WrestleManias of all time. Again, I've just named several WrestleManias that far surpassed this one, that kicked the shit out of this one, in even including one that I hate to this day, WrestleMania 17. WrestleMania 17 pulls this show. WrestleMania 17 buries this show. WrestleMania 17 destroys this show. Not to mention other great shows over the years, again, like I've referenced, like 3, like 10, like 12, like 14. Even in recent times, 24, 28, 30. You seriously can't tell me that you think WrestleMania 31 was that much better than WrestleMania 30. And even when I sat there and saw people talking about WrestleMania 30, they were sitting there saying, you know, this was really good, maybe top 5 to 10 range. I didn't see a lot of people talk about this being one of the best WrestleManias of all time. Again! And even some sitting there saying it was the best WrestleMania of all time? No, but for some reason there's this phenomenon going on. There's this widespread movement, it seems like, to kind of pound out this propaganda. But that, that's exactly what the fuck has happened. That WrestleMania 31 was the best ever. But the most ridiculous one of all is Dave Meltzer. Of all the people that should know better, of all of the people in the world who have this ridiculous opinion, it had to be Dave Meltzer. Here's the guy, mind you, and Dave Meltzer, that for 30 plus years has been the gold standard of wrestling journalism, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. Every other dirt sheet and wrestling news site off there flat out is a chop shop of what the Wrestling Observer Newsletter does, and everybody is a cheap knockoff imitation of Dave Meltzer. So this is a guy, in theory, that should have the most credibility. This is the type of guy that should know better. This is the type of guy that should understand better. But he flat out said that this is one of the best shows he's ever seen. So in all of the years of covering professional wrestling, Dave Meltzer, you went beyond saying this was one of the best WrestleManias of all time. You went beyond saying this was one of the best WWE pay-per-views of all time. You went so far as to say this is one of the best shows that you have ever seen, as in WrestleMania 31 might be one of your top five or top ten pay-per-view events in the history of professional wrestling sports entertainment pay-per-views. You said several great matches, a killer angle. There wasn't much that wasn't good. What the fuck were you watching? What the fuck are you smoking? Have you become that much of a mark for the WWE and the fact that they're actually giving you and feeding you some information now and treating you like a legitimate organization, even though you've been legitimate for years and years and fucking years? Then now all of a sudden you've taken a bit of a blind eye to some of the bullshit of the WWE. Are you going to sit there and cajole to the WWE now? Are you going to sit there and paint things over with a broad brush for the WWE now? Because clearly, if of all people, Dave Meltzer, not these other fucks that don't matter, but Dave Meltzer, somebody who does matter, somebody that should be credible, for him to sit there and say this is one of the best shows he's ever seen, he's completely and totally fucking ridiculous, and he goddamn good and well knows it. And don't give me this whole bullshit of, well, don't you think there's something to it if Meltzer sits there and says that it's one of the best shows he's ever seen, that maybe it is? No. It has absolutely nothing to fucking do with it at all. Skip Bayless has been talking about and writing about sports for over three decades, and he's unanimously thought of as an idiot, so what the fuck does that mean? How many different people I've seen involved with the NFL that have coached at the NFL level, like Brian Billick won a Super Bowl as an NFL coach. I've seen Michael Irvin win three Super Bowls, but they sat there and said that Jay Cutler was an MVP candidate heading into 2014. I still see people to this day that should know better. Former quarterbacks, former coaches, and damn good ones. Pro bowlers, all pros, Hall of Famers. That still sit there and think that Jay Cutler is going to be a franchise quarterback at the NFL level. 
Just because they have all this experience, just because they have all this years and all this so-called credibility built up, doesn't mean that they always know what the fuck they're talking about. Because most certainly when it comes to that case of a Jay Cutler, they most certainly fucking don't. And when it comes to somebody like a Dave Meltzer, who should know better? How in the bluest of blue fucks can he sit there and tell you with a straight face that this is one of the best shows I've ever seen? What's his angle here? One of the great workers in the history of the wrestling business, a guy who never really had to get in the ring, never had to get his hands dirty, and yet he gets paid a six-figure salary to be able to do what he does. God bless Dave Meltzer because, man, he's fucking deserved it. He's worked so many of you for so many different years to the point now where so many of you, when you do your wrestling reviews, you base it off of Dave Meltzer's star rating system. Who the fuck is Dave Meltzer to come up with a star rating system for crying out loud? When Al Snow said he was one of the greatest workers in the history of the business, he meant it, and God damn it, he was right. So why the hell is Meltzer working us now? What the hell is the angle here? What the hell is the approach here? It has to be something a little bit more to the table. Now is it because of Meltzer getting on different people's podcasts, like Austin's podcast, and with JR, and I think Jericho too, and so on and so forth, that now all of a sudden he's getting nicer? All of a sudden he doesn't want to go in as much on the WWE? Because that's the only thing I can fucking think of. Look, again, if you enjoyed the show, you enjoyed the show. If you thought it was a good WrestleMania, it was a good WrestleMania, fine, so be it. But for people to sit there and say that this is one of the best shows they've ever seen, or that this is one of the best WrestleManias of all time, or that this is the best WrestleMania of all time. This is only a product of one thing, and that is a product of the environment of today's WWE, that our standards have lowered so much, that our expectations are so low, that if the WWE does anything to come in just a little bit above them, it makes them look so much better than they really are. And frankly, that's the genius of today's WWE. They don't have to give you much to sit there and keep you sucked in, keep you defending them, keep you watching them, and keep you wanting more. When you look at WrestleMania 31, it was pretty much what most WWE shows are now. It was a lot of pointless filler crap, stuff that really frustrates you, and then those one or two things that really grab you by the ball sack or grab you by the JJ and suck you in and keep you wanting more. Fooling you into thinking that you're going to get more. Fooling you into thinking that things are going to be a whole lot better. Fooling you into thinking that this is going to be the start of something different, something special, and all this bullshit that ain't going to fucking happen. Remember WrestleMania 30 was going to do all that bullshit and what the fuck happened? WrestleMania 31, one of the most overrated pieces of hot garbage I think we're ever going to see in the history of WWE or professional wrestling. Just because your expectations were set so low that it came in a little bit or more than a little bit above them does not make this a great show. Most certainly doesn't make it an epic show. doesn't even make it a good show. How could people, especially like Dave Meltzer and others, be so blinded by this and be so sucked in by this to where their stupidity consumes them? Because to me, for my money, to sit there and say that this is one of the best WrestleManias of all time, top five, is ludicrous. To sit there and say that this is the best WrestleMania of all time is not me just wanting to live in nostalgia land. It's not just me sitting there and not wanting to give credit to anything today. Because as I've said before, WrestleMania 28 was a good show. WrestleMania 30 was a good show. WrestleMania 24 was a good show. And all three of those recent shows that have happened over the past decade bury this motherfucker 31 six feet or more under the fucking ground. Period. The best shows you've ever seen? Might I suggest you watch a little bit more professional wrestling? Might I suggest you go back and revisit some of these old shows before you sit there and state this ridiculous opinion? Because to have this particular opinion, not that you enjoyed the show, not that the show was good, but to call this one of the best WrestleManias of all time, or the best WrestleMania of all time, or one of the best shows you've ever seen, is completely ridiculous. And to have that opinion, to me, is completely ridiculous. Seriously. You cannot make an argument to me that this was one of the great WrestleManias of all time. If you want to sit there and say it was good, I don't agree with it, I'm not going to blast you for 50 fucking minutes about it. But if you're going to sit there and tell me that this was the best WrestleMania of all time, it just makes me feel pity. And it makes me sad because I understand then just how truly bad things have gotten with professional wrestling 
and just how low our standards have really gotten and just how much we are looking for excuses and reasons to justify why we continue watching the WWE because that's all it can fucking be. That and agendas of the pro WWE variety. And when you see what people like John Powell and Dave Meltzer said about this show, you have to start to wonder if that's the case as well.